On East Africa's Serengeti Plain, animal behaviors Jane Goodall, photographer Hugo Van Lauwick, and their eight-year-old son, Grub, observe a group of lions. Unlike the other great cats, essentially solitary creatures, lions are social animals that form enduring family units called prides. For at least the first year and a half of their lives, cubs are dependent upon the pride's females for protection and sustenance. As cubs compete in play and strengthen young muscles, they also develop close bonds that can endure through adulthood. Most of all, it's in the bond that grows between young females that the continuity of the pride is assured. Males are more transitory in their relationships than females. They sire offspring and protect the pride's territory, but ultimately they move on either by choice or when displaced by other males. Although they're usually dominant over females, males are apparently less successful hunters. A buffalo, alert to the approach of a young male lion. The enraged buffalo counters by charging pride. The legend of the lion as king of the jungle is less than accurate, for contrary to its reputation, the lion often does not catch its prey. Even for monarchs, life in the wild is difficult. Now Jane Goodall and Hugo Van Lauwick will observe in intimate detail the members of one small pride and record on film a seldom seen struggle for survival. short grass plains of the Serengeti, the heart of Africa's lion country. Jane Goodall, Hugo Van Lauwick, and their son, Grub, enter the territory of a small lion pride whose individual members they have recently identified. One of the pride's two males is encountered. It's the less aggressive one that Jane and Hugo have named Drum. The rest of the pride may be nearby. Drum moved off, he did not seem particularly agitated by our presence. The males of a pride keep strange males away. Demonstrating that this was his territory, Drum sprayed the area with a pungent glandular secretion used for marking. Then, Drum joined Gong, the other male of the pride. It was likely that Drum and Gong were brothers. They hardly overexerted themselves. They spent up to 20 hours a day resting or sleeping.
Now Jane and Hugo seek out the four females and 16 cubs that comprise the rest of the pride. As ecologist George Schaller found, a pride's territory may extend over 100 square miles. There was Viola, of the four lionesses, the most maternal and protective of cubs. She was soon joined by Fiddle and the rest of the youngsters. The other two mothers, Zither and Fife, seemed to be away. Most likely, they were hunting for food. All the females in a pride share in the feeding and protection of young cubs. It is extremely difficult to tell which cubs belong to which mother. Litters within a pride intermix and will suckle from any of the pride's females. The mothers are tolerant of all the cubs, but give preferential treatment to their own. As the cubs scrambled for position, Viola, ever maternal, displayed great patience. Fiddle, however, showed irritation and abruptly ceased nursing. As Fiddle began to move off, Viola observed her for a moment and then prepared to follow. The cubs are often moved from one place to another. The cubs are only seven weeks old and it's not easy for them to keep up, especially Banjo, the runt of the pride. Females with very young cubs usually moderate their pace, and it's up to the cubs to follow. If they can't keep up, they may be abandoned. And Banjo is trailing far behind. Banjo is lost. Among lion cubs, the mortality rate is as high as 50%. Viola is preoccupied by a bothersome thorn. Banjo tries to find his way out of the high grass. Viola appears to have heard his cries. Viola must have been Banjo's mother. She picked him up like a newborn cub to carry him back to the others. Suddenly, the pride's other two lionesses, Zitha and Fife, appeared, apparently returning from an unsuccessful hunt. Fiddle, followed by the cubs, greeted them in typical lion fashion, rubbing heads, first with Zither and then with Fife. 
Then Viola returned with banjo, and the foursome was complete. Now Jane observes a fifth female lurking about, close to the pride. It's the lioness Lute, a former member of the pride, but now apparently an outcast. A solitary male ventures into the pride's territory. He's a nomad possibly in search of a mate. With drum and gong absent, the intruder was not likely to be challenged. It was the outcast loot that drew his attention. He seemed about to court her. Nomadic males wander throughout the Serengeti, unattached, feeding and mating where they can. The other female seemed nervous, probably concerned for their cubs, so dangerously close to a strange male. During the first phase of lion courtship, the female seems to reject the male forcing him to defend himself even as he pursues her. Karma now, Lute moved off, closely followed by the persistent male. After making the approach of males difficult, if not impossible, female lions suddenly become submissive and allow the males to embrace them. With nips and bites, the male expresses his ardor. Among lions, mating may continue for several days at approximately 15 minute intervals. As we observed this pair, we couldn't help thinking that if Lute and Outcast were to have cubs, they would have little chance of surviving without the support and protection of a pride. This nomad male would soon be on his way, leaving Lute alone once more. Even within a pride, the consort relationship between male and female does not endure for long. A whirling dust devil signals the beginning of the dry season on the Serengeti Plain. Large herds of wildebeests and other species now move on, migrating toward the bush country, where water and grass will be more plentiful. For Viola and the others, there would be difficult times ahead. The growing cubs were demanding more and more food, but now, with the dry season upon them, the supply of both food and water would dwindle. <coughs> Until now, little Banjo had managed to keep up with the others. But during the hard months ahead, the females would probably have to be less attentive to their cubs. It is the season of the scavengers. Their prey are the sick and the weak. 
those fallen during the migration. Lions can be scavengers too. Gong confiscates the vultures find. Few dare challenge the male lion. One bold bird will not be denied. Gong drags the wildebeest away. Male lions prefer to dine alone. They will share their feast on occasion, but usually only with the other males of their pride. The females must catch their own prey. More skilled at hunting than males, they often hunt in groups or pairs. A wildebeest separated from its herd. This animal will satisfy the hunger of all four females and their cubs if it can be taken. With fiddle and fife stationed on one flank, Zither, the pride's best huntress, charges in for the kill. But she's unable to maintain the speed of the wildebeest and is outrun. hidden in the grass during the chase, ran to greet the females as they returned from the hunt. If their mothers had been successful, they would now be led to the kill. First they ran to Viola, then to Zitha, but their anticipation was in vain. The dry season had indeed begun. After six weeks at the Gombe Stream Research Center, where her primary work with wild chimpanzees continues, Jane has returned to the Serengeti. I wonder if we'll find the prize. It's a little chilly, isn't it? Now they set off to find the four lionesses and their cubs. There you go. Careful. Lions were last seen about eight miles from the camp. The Serengeti was very dry, and game seemed scarce. The cubs would now be three months old. I was eager to see how well they had fared. All four lionesses were there. Viola, Zitha, Fiddle, and Fife. But as we watched Viola tending the cubs, we realized that of the original 16, only eight were left. The others had most likely fallen victim to hyenas or other hungry prowlers. When food is scarce, even male lions are known to kill cubs. Drum, he only occasionally visited the females. They greeted him submissively. Yet he seemed ill at ease. No matter how submissive they may appear, females with small cubs can become very aggressive in concern for their youngster's safety. And there was Loot, the outcast, still lurking about. A lone female will often stay close to an established pride, seeking an opportunity to share in its kill. One thing remains in doubt, the fate of Banjo. Is Banjo the cub pulling on Viola's tail? Lions can be identified by their whisker marks, difficult to observe when they're moving about.
cubs are attracted to the male lion's large features and colorful mane. Such play can be dangerous to cubs. Males will tolerate only so long the insistent overtures of the young. Viola moves in closer to drum and the persistent cub, who may soon be in jeopardy. When harassed by cubs, male lions are unpredictable. seems to have had enough. Apparently to avoid danger to the cubs, Viola emphatically sends Drum off. A male is no match for four females protecting their cubs. moves off and encounters the outcast female, Loot. <laughs> Having been rebuffed by the females of his own pride, he seems tentative with Loot, cautious. He seems almost to be feigning indifference as he sniffs the area. watches his every move. It appears that loot will not be an easy conquest. Loot seems to be playing a waiting game. But Drum doesn't seem to know the rules. It may be that Loot was not in heat and was therefore unwilling to mate. But clearly Drum was attracted to her. Although Loot repelled him, it was quite apparent that she did not perceive Drum as a threat. For a long time, they lay side by side. This was a very strange romance.
drum then rose and looked in the direction of the pride. Drum approached Lute again, and for a moment it seemed she might be interested. But Drum let the moment pass. Finally, Drum seemed to move in with a little more determination, but wound up aimlessly sniffing the ground as he had done before. Then he moved off. He scraped the ground as though frustrated by Luke's indifference. It was difficult to know. Was Luke really unwilling or was Drum simply inept? outsider like Lute is courted by a pride male, the pride females may attack her and drive her off. Although Lute appeared to reject Drum, she will no longer be tolerated even on the periphery of the pride's territory. Submissively, but she is soon surrounded by the avenging females. Lute is chased beyond the border of the pride's territory. She would never return. Now the females will continue the search for food, both for themselves and their cubs, on the dry, unyielding plains of the Serengeti. The hungry cubs rush from high brush to partake of a meal. The four females have either downed or appropriated a large heart beast. Four consecutive days of observation, this is the first time Jane and Hugo have seen the pride eat. Females will sometimes eat first and deny their cubs until they themselves are satisfied. But these four females allowed their cubs to compete unmolested. Suddenly drum appeared, attracted perhaps by the sounds of feeding. When females down a prey, male lions will often take it over. We had not seen Drum since his unsuccessful encounter with the outcast loot. Perhaps made nervous by his presence, the females dragged the carcass further away. Cautiously, Drum moved closer. He seemed indecisive. Zitha saw him. All four females charged him. They would drive him from their kill. The cowed male watched as the females returned to their cubs. 
who, at least for the moment, were engaged in an uninterrupted feast. Drum was outmatched. Suddenly, Gong arrived on the scene and raced directly to the females and their kill. Now, bolstered by Gong's arrival, Drum gained courage. and the two males appropriated the entire meal for themselves. Against two males, the females were helpless. For the still hungry but cautious cubs, there might be some scraps once the males were finished. The easy tops of acacia trees provide the pride and escape from the hot, airless ground. Viola is the last of the females to scamper up, and she finds there's standing room only. A cub attempts to follow Viola up the tree. This cub was not nearly as adept at climbing as the others, and Viola seemed concerned. Suddenly we realized, by his whisker marks, that this was Banjo. Banjo had survived. Very carefully, Viola started down, as though to avoid Banjo. With utmost caution, Banjo follows. Inch by inch. Caution must be the key to Banjo's survival. Trees may provide a good vantage point for the detection of prey. Zither advances first. Her body taut, she stalks close to the ground toward the zebra herd. Other females will join her. She conceals herself in the grass and inches forward. Zebra becomes aware of Zither's presence, but is still at a safe distance. Fiddle will complete the haunting party.
Still some distance from the herd, Zither moves into position for the attack. Viola and the other females are ready if the zebras turn their way. In the tree, out of danger, the cubs wait. Suddenly a colt and a mare bolt away. And Zither is quickly behind. Zither closes in on the lagging mare. Lions can run only in short, swift bursts. And the galloping zebra gets away. Viola, Fiddle, and Fife had not been properly positioned to assist. Now Zither returns from her unsuccessful hunt. The lion may be the king of beasts, but it has its problems too. Most of its prey can outrun it, and its chances of finding food for itself and its young diminish as the dry season deepens. In the early dawn, migrating flamingos come to feed and rest on the Serengeti's soda lakes and marshes. Four female lions and their cubs roam the salty marshland in search of food. By now, Banjo and the others have not eaten for a week. Zither spots the prey. Flamingos are not a common prey of lions. Only extreme hunger could have driven the pride to hunt these birds. Lions lack the racing stamina to pursue flamingos through the water. Stealthily, Zither moves closer to catch the birds unaware. The birds seem to sense Zither's presence. They need a running start before they can take to the air. here. Now, leaving the other females and the cubs behind, Zither, the pride's best hunter, went off on her own. Adult lions are adapted to lives of feast or famine and can endure starvation diets. It was the cubs that were most in danger. Zither seemed a most dejected creature. We 
decided to follow Zitha and see how she fared. The wildebeest's best defense is its speed. Zitha had to get very close to have any chance of success. The wildebeest seemed to sense that something was amiss. Nervously, the wildebeest moved on. Unnoticed by the others, Zitha waited until they all had passed. Then she would attack from the rear. Once again, Zitha was denied. A single lion hunting large prey during the day succeeds less than one third of the time. Out of its burrow, exposed in the open, a warthog. Unyielding quest. We had been following Zither since dawn, and it was in the late afternoon that she seemed to be heading back in the direction of the pride. Though she'd had no rest, it was probable that she would hunt with the other females after sunset. Then she met Viola and they greeted each other. There were some zebras grazing nearby. Zitha moved toward the zebras as Viola watched. A zebra seems to see her. continues to graze. On the right flank, Viola settles into position, while on the left, Zither edges closer. A solitary zebra is the chosen prey. Now, with long, determined strides, Viola moves up quickly as Zither begins pursuit. incredibly tenacious, but no less incredible is the determination of the zebra not to be brought down. It is 
a spectacle of nature, a stunning display of the courage and skill of two species in extremity. It appears that Zither's about to fail again when Viola enters the fray. Two lions are more than the zebra can handle. The zebra made an astonishing final effort to escape. But it was to no avail. And scavenging hyenas were already gathering close by. The lions were outnumbered. Zither and Viola were forced to relinquish their prize. Hyenas in large numbers have little fear of female lions. Viola and Zitha watched helplessly as their meal was consumed by others. The two lionesses made their way back to the pride. Fiddle and Fife had remained behind tending the cubs who would not feed this day. Although these lions were having their difficulties, theirs was far from a hopeless fate, for lions have developed a social structure that enables them to cope with a demanding existence. It is in the unity of a pride that its success can be measured, and from all we knew of this small group, we felt certain it would continue and thrive. By August, the third month of the dry season, we were ready to depart. Viola and the cubs had begun to show the effects of deprivation. They were very thin, and you could see their ribs clearly outlined against their skin. Viola seemed to be leading the cubs toward a specific place. They would feed at last. The zebra had been either brought down or appropriated by Zither and Fife. Now, unmolested, the hungry pride fed in peace. As night falls, silence descends upon the Serengeti Plain. Suddenly, the stillness is interrupted by a thunderous roar. It has been called the voice of Africa. Admired for its beauty and power, or condemned for its brutality and greed, the lion dominates the landscape. It is truly king of the beasts. Yet in nature, the lion has no royal privileges. For like any other animal, it is subject to nature's inflexible laws. <laughs> <laughs> 